I cover the scope with the blood of Christ. I seal any open demonic pores with the blood of Christ. Don't mind me, folks. I have a hair mask in my hair, so I'm looking a little crazy. But I was listening to a famous um, Gone But Not Forgotten evangelist from Puerto Rico, Yeye Avila. And he was talking about uh, the formation of man and how God breathed life into Adam. And how, according to Yeye, his interpretation is that a man didn't have, uh, he didn't, he wasn't truly a soul until God breathed life into him. Which got me thinking in the, the term life because Yehovah says that life is in the blood and the power of life and death are in the tongue so i'm thinking he breathed life but life is in the blood so how does it so all these years of thinking that and being told and being taught and not really looking into the, the original hebrew word uh for breath and life in that particular um instance I started doing, I did a study. And we have to, I've said this a million times, uh, English is very, very limited. Uh, one word has uh, at most two meanings, whereas other languages um, have multiple meanings for, or have a, a concept with multiple words, meaning different forms of the same concept. Like uh, in Greek and in, and in Hebrew, there are different forms of the word love. In Spanish, there are two forms. In English, there's one word for love. But in other languages, there are different kinds of love, and they're very specific with the word they use. So I've realized that it may not be the word uh, that I thought it was in the original language in Genesis 2-7. So um, I went ahead and looked into it, And let me show you what I saw. So I did some research and I found this page that I think explains it perfectly. I don't know if you can really see it on my phone. It's kind of dark. I think I have the blue light filter on this. What I found interesting is that the word that I thought was Ruach was actually breath of life is Nishmat Hayim. Rather than Ruach Haim, meaning to gasp. So this might be a better translation of Genesis 2-7. Then Yahweh, or Yehovah, God formed man of dust from the ground and blew into his nostrils the gasp of life, Nishmash Haim, and man became a living being. And that just blew my mind because all these years I thought it, you know, we're taught um, from men who go to seminary that this is the, the Ruach that he broke, that he breathed his Ruach into, into Adam. And in a certain sense it is, but there are different kinds of Ruach. And the gasp of life really got to me because immediately my mind went to when somebody's rescued from drowning. And they're uh, and they're having uh, their their water pumped out of their lungs, and they're having breaths breathed into them. They're they're getting CPR, and when they finally come to that first gasp of air, it's kind of like being reborn. Uh, the you know Yehovah formed it, uh, breathed life through his nostrils, but we get CPR, we get mouth to mouth. And even further, if you look even further back, it's like when a baby is in the amniotic, uh, in the amniotic, um, sorry folks, is in the amniotic uh, 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 bag or where it is, with the sack, I'm sorry, the sack. And... He is in that, in, in basically in, in, in liquid, in, in water. And when he's born, he takes his first gasp of life. This is just so 
appropriate and direct and, and, and so perfectly translated in Hebrew. And because I didn't know that particular page, I went to a trusted source, uh, Bible Hub, and I confirmed uh, the translation. It's, a, it's spelled differently. I think, they, I think Bible Hub just uses a, a phonetic spelling to make it easier for those of us who don't speak Hebrew or not are not Bible scholars. But it is Hayim, uh, breath. So this definitely was an eye-opener for me um, into the meaning of breath of life and the connotation because of the, of, of the precise language, the connotation of, of, of breath. And I was just I was just blown away. And I wanted to share that with you folks. The more you, you, you study the word, which is a living word, the word is Christ. The word is God. So the word is alive. You can read it a, a thousand times. I've been reading it since the fourth grade at least. And every time there's just it's just like digging for gold. You just find such treasures in the word. You can read the same verse over and over again, and, and the Holy Spirit will impart on you a different understanding each time. So I, I strongly suggest, now that we're, it looks like we're going to be on lockdown again, at least in New York City, we're, like we're going to be on lockdown again. We're going to have plenty of time on our hands to really dig into the word and study the, the original uh, language. You know, nowadays, it's so easy. Um, it's given to us, and it's explained to us, and it's, it's spelled out for us phonetically. To truly understand what God is saying to us. Be blessed, folks.